I am what you can call an Apple fanboy. And I know that this is still a thing because I do read 80% of my comments and you guys remind me of that on a pretty regular basis. So knowing that, you shouldn't be surprised that I was watching the unveiling of the Apple Silicon Max live because I think this is a very interesting step and maybe not only for Apple, but for the computing business in general. Although that last one, I still don't know for certain. Now, I know that the whole of YouTube is full with videos about what everybody thinks of Apple Silicon, but I wanna focus on what Apple Silicon could do or could mean for studios. And of course, I didn't test anything because I also do not have the new uh, Apple Silicon Max yet. Uh, so everything is based on speculation. Now, first a quick update for the people that do not know yet what Apple Silicon is. In short, it's their own SOC. SOC is also known as a system on a chip, and Apple has a lot of experience with designing their own SOCs from uh, things like the, the iPhone, which they also put glass on the back. And glass is glass, and glass breaks. Uh, but also from the iPad, which I'm actually reading this script from. And I have to say that these Apple Silicon, they weren't called Apple Silicon back then. It was the A14 or something, or A12 or whatever. Anyway, I, I, I tried them out on the iPad Pro and I did it with some 4K video editing. And that's actually pretty impressive. iPad Pro on battery, super thin machine, no fans, really impressive. Now this iOS SoC architecture is now being scaled up and coming to the Mac. And they're promising two things, performance and efficiency. And if you think about it, they are both really important in studio use. Now performance is important because of the obvious, we do request really some power from the machines and not necessarily for uh, like audio routing, but most of all, when you're really into things like music production, when you're running software synthesizers and that kind of stuff. And on the other hand, the efficiency is just as important. Not because of battery life, we plug it into the wall in a studio, but because of the cooling. The more efficient a system is, the less cooling it needs, and thus, the less noise it makes. I'm running a Mac Pro over here, an old hefty beast from 2009. And whenever I load up some heavier sessions, it starts to make more acoustical noise just because of the fans that, that start spinning. It's all SSD, so that's not making noise, just the fans, and it's Kind of annoying. The chip that Apple announced last Tuesday is called the M1. And quite honestly, I have no idea how powerful it is. Or maybe not is. All the information that Apple was giving in their slides was upon the highest quality of snake oil I've seen in a long time. I mean, no skills on the graphs? These lines? They say nothing. I mean, I mean the graph skills might even be exponential. Who knows? And then this one. 3.5x faster CPU performance compared to what? If it's compared to my Mac Pro, or even if it's compared to my MacBook Pro, I would immediately buy one. But compared to what? If you compare it to my G4 Power Mac from 1999, of course it's three and a half times faster. And same goes for 8K ProRes video playback in DaVinci Resolve. What about H.264 and H.265? I have literally no idea how powerful this thing is. Or again, not is. And even then, even if the benchmarks, which are coming in the next few days when they start shipping it, I mean, the computer YouTubers will all have their orders placed by now, it still doesn't say anything about studio performance. Because if you look at it closely, audio is a pretty specific workload. What I want in, in my studio specifically, and what you also want in recording studios, of course, is low latency audio streaming on my interface, 64 channels at least. And this could be on USB, Thunderbolt, or maybe even AVB. But I don't know if the new Macs even support AVB on their Ethernet ports. Cannot find anything about it. And I know from experience that this whole low latency thing is not necessarily the CPU speed, but rather how something is designed. And that's also a thing if you think about the software. Because the Apple M1 is an ARM chip, so the infrastructure is, is completely different and software has to be recompiled and sometimes even adjusted to run natively on Apple Silicon. Luckily, 
for everybody that has already bought one, there is a conversion layer called Rosetta 2. That will make it so that all that old software will run on it as well. But again, what performance impact will this have on these very specific low latency audio workloads? Yes, they are saying that some apps even run faster on Apple Silicon with Rosetta 2, but I'm not sure about audio. What I do know is that updating software is not the strongest part of our industry. Pro, to, pro, pro tools, have it. <gasps> and with a lot of different plugins and thus a lot of different suppliers, it can take ages before we can really enjoy that Apple Silicon stuff natively. Now, what I would love to do and what would answer all these questions is buy an Apple M1 powered Mac mini and throw it in a real world test, also known as using it as my main studio machine. And I really wanna know how powerful this thing is. Now the base model starts at 700 euros, which is a really low price for a powerful full-fledged Mac. It is actually almost in the bedroom studio territory, but again that, that does depend on how powerful it really is. But I think it's really interesting for the YouTube content perspective, but I don't know. If I look at it from the business side, I'm not sure yet. The 700 euro Mac mini is pretty limited, you have to use external storage, you only have 8 gigs of RAM, so it's interesting of course to see how powerful that is. But if I wanna run my studio on it, I rather spec it out a bit more. And then it's getting close to 2000 euros. And I think with all the converter cables in it, it's over 2000 euros. And this is most of all because of the high storage costs. Storage is ridiculously expensive at Apple. And apart from that, first generation Apple products are not really known because of their long-term support. If I wouldn't have a YouTube channel, it would have been a no-go investment. It would be, from that perspective, I would wait. For the videos, could be really interesting. So yeah, what do you guys think? Let me know that in the comments below. I'm still not sure. And that is what I think of the Apple Silicon. I try to keep this video short because most things have already been said about it. I mean, everybody is making videos and, and content about this. So yeah, and if it turns out to be a good idea to get a Mac Mini, a bit of financial help would mean a lot. And this can be done in three different ways. Uh, the first is by buying my merchandise. You have to like that, of course. T-shirts are pretty good, actually. The, the quality is decent. <laughs> I have no knowledge about clothing, so I don't know. But yeah, I'll link it under the video. Small bit is kickbacked to the studio so that I can buy stuff to review. In this case, Mac Mini. The second way to support the channel is by pledging a bit to the Patreon campaign, to my Patreon campaign, which I'm going to link over here. In return for pledging to the Patreon campaign you get early access to my videos, answer to questions and a lot of other good stuff, so check it out. And the last way to support me is by watching more videos of course, so I'll link one of them over here. Thanks a lot for watching, keep pushing and bye bye.